For many fans, being on the terraces isn't close enough to the game they worship. If they can't make the grade from amateur football to the professional ranks, and most can't, the only other way to get any closer to their clubs and players is by getting a job in football. Tonight, the fan who wants to earn £100,000 a year from Keepy Uppies. It, it takes up most of my time, really. Fans who want to be radio stars. A 1-0 lead is not always a ticket to a victory, but if Stanley keep counter-attacking with pizzazz and pace like this, then they stand every chance. And the lifelong Chelsea fan who loved his club so much, he asked for a job and got it. Why would I want to work anywhere else? This is as good as it gets. Chelsea have established themselves as one of the top clubs in world football and their fan base now reaches far beyond their home in West London. Stirling, near Glasgow, an unlikely place to find a mad keen Chelsea supporter. Not for Robbie McHogg, the blue of Glasgow Rangers, at the age of 17, he's already a seasoned Chelsea supporter. I was about eight and one of my uncles bought me a, a Corinthian figure and it was Rude Hullet who at the time was Chelsea manager, and I just simply asked her, who's this, who does he play for? And they said Chelsea, and I thought, hmm, follow them. And it's just sort of stuck with me since. I try to get to Chelsea matches, home or away, about once a month. That's the, the, the sort of target I set myself. And something that's difficult, obviously, with work and, and school, getting time off. And it's with money as well, because they're not the cheapest tickets in the world. So around about once a month, home or away. Being a schoolboy, Robbie doesn't have much spare cash, so he worked as a kitchen hand to raise the money he needs to fulfil his passion. I think it's quite mad that Robbie works every weekend while he's at school all week and he spends all his money just going down to London. And I did try and encourage him to support Stirling Albion. I thought that would have made life much easier and I like to support the local team, but he's his own person and, and that was his choice and we support him in it. Robbie, well, it's time to go. Get this isn't one of Robbie's usual 300-mile pilgrimages south to see his team play. He's been invited to Chelsea's ground to meet a fellow Chelsea fan and to be shown something few football supporters ever get to see. This journey usually takes around nine and a half hours from Stirling to London, Victoria. My plan is just sleep, hopefully. That's, that's basically what I want to do, just sleep, and then we cut in London. Robbie's fellow Chelsea fan is 26-year-old Adam Burridge, nickname Budgie, a Chelsea man through and through who's managed to turn his love into labour. Budgie's day job involves showing VIPs behind the scenes at Chelsea. I got this job in the year 2001. It was an advertisement in the programme. The ex-chairman Ken Bates in his programme notes said, if you know a lot about football and about Chelsea specifically, and you can talk a lot uh, coming for an interview, and that's sort of what I do anyway. I know a lot about Chelsea and I do talk a lot. Robbie's in for the thrill of his life, a tour around parts of Chelsea most fans never see. Right, Robbie, so what you've got here is you've got the stadiums new and old. OK, so obviously the stadium that you're going to see today is this one. So the current stadium holds 42,546 people. And in terms of real estate, it's probably the most expensive football stadium in the world. I've been working here now for about four years and coming as a supporter since I was five years old, so it's pretty much a dream job. And as you come up here, obviously you've got the 1970s team oh, yeah. and obviously the 1971. Now this programme actually belongs to my dad. Is it? Um, yeah, he was 14 years old and he decided to take a couple of days off school and go to Athens. Now, bearing in mind, he went to school in Wandsworth, which is about a mile from here. This programme now in auction can go for £2,000. So it's a very, very valuable item, in my family especially. Mm. I had to wrestle that out of his hands to get it in there. Uh, yes, I have a season ticket with my dad. Um, we sit in the East Upper, which is just behind me over there, about six rows from the back. Uh, we've been there since about 1997. Then over here, you've got possibly the most popular part of the museum. This is Jose's coat. 
Okay, so this is the actual coat that he wore for every single game of last season. This is the real one. It's from Armani, and Jose was wearing it for every game. 40,000 Manchester City fans were singing your coach from Matalan. Somebody turns around to me, and how was your day today? I was like, oh, I was chatting with John Terry and Frank Lampard. It's my baby cousin. He'll be the one that his eyes just go like this, because he thinks I play for the team. He still thinks I'm the captain of the team, bless him. Right then, shall we uh, go and see inside the stadium? Let's do that. Rock on, let's go. Right, Rob, so we're in the players' tunnel now. Obviously, this is where the guys will come. The away teams go just through there, and obviously through here you'll have Frank Lampard and John Terry. This is where all the boys will come. But unfortunately, we're the only people that can see this, so guys, we're going to have to leave you behind. We'll be coming through, Cheers. and we'll see you in a bit. Keepy Uppy, or ball juggling, is a fun pastime for millions of fans. But Keepy Uppy is also big business, a professional sport in its own right, called freestyle. Newport in South Wales, wannabe keepy uppy pros are gathering for a competition which could give them the chance to earn up to £100,000 a year. Um, we're looking at finding the best freestyler in Wales. We're expecting 50 people upwards, but with the weather, it's snowing a blizzard outside. We're not quite sure how many we're going to get. Dan Magnus will represent England in this year's Freestyle World Championship. Today, he's a competition judge. He's already got what it takes and has an eye for a new talent. All that's going to happen now is we're going to put some music on um, and then you're just going to do a few tricks for us. This competition is open to all. The good and the not so good. We're looking for someone with a little bit more panache, shall we say, someone with a little bit more freestyle skills. Good football style, but we're just looking for a few more tricks, you know what I mean? But it's going to have to be a no from me, unfortunately. And the overall winner will have to have the package that can put all his skills and all his tricks and put them into a routine. It's like dancing, it's like choreography. The next one of these, a local lad from nearby Cardiff. At stake today is a chance to entertain the crowd at half-time at a big-time football match. No pressure here, then. I would say that you are very nervous. Practice not so much in your back garden, perhaps in the front garden where people can see you in the street. You've got to do it and perform. It's important just to keep the tricks simple, because people don't want to see you mucking up. From my point of view, it's a yes. You're definitely good enough to come to the national final. Absolutely, for me, it's a yes as well. So you're through. Congratulations. <laughs> Up now is a 20-year-old with form. John Farnsworth has already won a previous heat in this competition and fancies his chances. Yeah, I train every day, so um, it, it takes up most of my time, really. I'm also at college, but this is my main thing. Because I'm looking to do freestyle full-time and um, make a job from it, so as much things I can win, I will win. Good, that. It's nice, John. Good skills, good tricks, good confidence. It's been a real pleasure to have you here today, mate. We definitely are putting you through. Our day's about winding down, and our winner today, a chap who was adamant that he'd come all the way from the northwest, John Farnworth. John's on a roll. He's made the move from keepy uppy to freestyle. It's a nice trophy to take home, to show my mum and dad. I'm sure they'll be quite proud of me. At Chelsea, fans Robbie and Budgie are halfway through their VIP tour. Right, Robbie, so we've seen the home and away dressing room. Yeah. What do you think? Ours a little bit better? I think so. Just a little bit better, isn't it? Not hugely. Uh, obviously, the away dressing room, as you'll know, it's never, never going to be as no. good, is it? I mean, if we go to most grounds in England, the away dressing room is never going to be as good as the home dressing room. There's obviously, we do little things to make life somewhat difficult for the away team. You've got to give yourself an advantage. Should we go and see the stadium? Let's do it. So this is what it's like to walk out the sun. Not bad, eh? <laughs> and that is where the bus sits. Oh, I could sit here every week. <laughs> 
So if you can imagine the view from there with the atmosphere all around you, sort of what it sounds like, what it feels like, it's just got to be the best feeling in the world. Now, Mr Abramovich's box is the one just up there, next to one that's a Sky Sports. Right. So he's got perfect seats. It's absolutely brilliant seat. Even if he's a little bit cold, there's a button on the side of his chair that if he presses it, the chair warms up in five minutes. Because from down low, you, you don't get the same perspective, do you? No. And then you come up here and you're like, wow, this is... Yeah, this is absolutely huge. When you sit down there, like in the dugout, it doesn't seem that big, but then when you're up here and you get to see it all, it's pretty amazing. When you see your idols and your heroes and that in the pitch or even in the telly, you know, you do you do feel sort of close to them when they're playing for your team, but, you know, when you, you sit where they sit and you do think, wow, you know, some of the people that have walked out here, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Chelsea will be a huge part of my life for the rest of my life. It has been, you know, for a lot of my life and will be for the rest of it. Football to some people is just a sport, it's something that happens. Football to some other people is a hobby, but to a lot of people, for the great majority of people, it's their entire life and it consumes every thought, every action and a lot of their wage bill as well. And that's what's brilliant to meet Robbie, to actually have somebody that does that and loves it as well and doesn't mind sharing it with other people. What right, Robbie. Really nice to meet you, my yeah, friend. Thanks, that was absolutely brilliant. My pleasure. It's pretty much everything I've always wanted to do in a job and I can't really foresee me ever going anywhere because this is everything I can need. Coming up, John's won the Welsh Open, but can he lift his game and keep it up in front of a really big crowd? Probably expecting about 10,000 here today, so it's going to be a big game, big gate. Uh, bit of pressure, but I'm sure you'll come. <laughs> and what does it take to follow in the voice steps of Brian Moore and John Motson? The first time they sit on the terraces with a microphone in their hand, 30 seconds before they go live, they'll be intimidated then.